Welcome back to the Wizard Shop, and today the big question comes along. Is it time for a new engine for a 2011 F-150? Let's get started. So I'm not much of a Ford fan. I do like GM products as far as trucks the best. However, these being a Ford F-150 are actually the most popular truck on the road. You can drive anywhere across country to go visit grandma and you'll see F-150s left and right. They're all over the place, so they really do sell well. Thank God this is not a 5.43 valve Triton. I, I'm really happy for this customer that it didn't get stuck with a garbage engine like that. If you want to know how garbage it is, check out my video on the 3 valve Triton where we did put a new engine in a Lincoln at Mark LT really sad how they designed those engines. This one, however, was brought here because when the engines warmed up and they're driving along, there's no issues, but when they come to a stoplight, the oil pressure light was coming on and the warning on the dash, oil pressure warning. They were concerned something's really wrong with the truck. They took it to some other shop. I don't know where they took it. And how I found out that they took it to another shop is when we inspected this, we were looking at the oil pressure sending unit. We could see the wiring had been damaged, had been repaired. There was some bare wiring. We were like, what is going on here? So we called the customer. We're like, what, what happened here? We, we don't want to go any further until we have some answers. And oh, they said, oh yeah, we had another shop put a new sensor on, a new connector and this and that. It still hasn't solved the problem. One thing I found in the shop is whenever you get a problem like this on any vehicle, it really takes a little digging to get the full story of what's going on. Customers commonly drop off a vehicle, here's the keys, find out what's wrong, and then you start to find weird things. What is going on here? Then you get the full story. Oh, I had my grandma's friend's son work on it, and blah, blah, blah. And sometimes it takes a little bit to get the real information that you need. The information that I acquired here told me that the last shop did not use data to solve the problem. And you guys know I like hard facts, data, no parts are ordered, no decisions are made until I see data. And in this situation, we removed the oil pressure sending unit and we installed a gauge. Let me show you guys what that gauge looks like. Here we have an OTC transmission and also an engine oil pressure test kit. It comes with low pressure, 0 to 100, and for transmissions it has high pressure, 0 to 400. You can get this on my Amazon Affiliates page. You can check that out. We have these for sale there. It has all the different fittings you would need for all different types of oil pressure sending units or ports on the transmission or whatnot. But when we hooked this up with the correct fitting, once we got the gauge hooked up in place of the sensor, we had the gauge kind of up by the windshield so we could watch it. We go to drive it, get it nice and warmed up, and sure enough, when you come to a stop, it should not be below 15 PSI, but it actually would go to 10. And that was why the light is coming on. It truly is low oil pressure. So based on those readings, we knew it truly does have low oil pressure. Throwing a sending unit at it is not going to solve the oil pressure problem. So whoever put the sensor on last for this customer did nothing for them but take their money. But now that we knew it truly is low oil pressure, it wasn't so low that it's like the engine's going to die. 10 PSI will actually still will lubricate things, but it's not going to actuate cam solenoids and cam phasers and things of that nature. It can get to trouble there. We don't work on a whole lot of domestic trucks, so I, I know a few friends in the industry that work at dealerships, Ford dealerships, so I called a couple of friends. And they said, yeah, well, how many miles is on it? And I said, well, about 180,000. And they're like, well, the engine's worn out. I said, that's it? That's worn out? They said, yeah, what we do here in the dealership, when they get high miles on it, you got the crank main bearings, get the cam caps, the bearings and things, they start to get the clearances too large and oil pressure drops. It's not really going to just right away destroy the engine, but it does make the light come on. I said, what am I going to do, just quote them a new engine? They said, no, what we do here is we drop some oil out, or actually drain some oil out, 
and replace the oil with 20% Lucas. And you guys know what I'm talking about is Lucas, the bottle of Lucas oil stabilizer or oil additive. So we did that. They also said make sure it has an OEM Motorcraft oil filter because the cheap Walmart or whatever brand that you use oil filters can actually drop the PSI just enough, maybe five. That can be enough to cause some issues. So we got the Lucas in, we got a Motorcraft oil filter on, we went and drove it, got it warmed up, and it worked. At first I was like, "This, come on guys, you're a dealership, you just dump some Lucas in it? They're like, yeah, that's the answer for this particular engine. It causes the engine to last 50 or more thousand miles. It works. Sure enough, after we got it warmed up, we watched the gauge, it would not go below 20 now. It stayed at 20 all the time, even hot. So I was like, okay, I guess that worked. So from here on out, for the rest of the life of this truck, or at least the engine anyway, their oil change will include 20% Lucas and the rest of the correct engine oil at the correct weight with an OEM Motorcraft oil filter. Problem solved. No, they don't need a new engine, but theoretically, yes, they do. This thing's going to continue to wear and it's going to wear out. It's not so bad because it's not like this is a 50,000 mile motor. It's almost 200,000 miles, so it's not surprising to me. But I'm glad that we could solve it for them. That will get them by probably for the rest of the life of this motor. Thinking about test equipment, I've got some really sweet test equipment that just came in from Autel. They're actually sponsoring this video, but I've got some new amps clamps. They just came out with these and they sent them to me and they said, try them out, see what you think. They are really sweet. Let's take a look. Autel just sent me this really sweet kit. They just came out with it. It actually has amp probes. It has a coil unplug probe and multiple other items to use in testing. Today we're going to use the low amps clamp, the high amps clamp, and we're going to show you guys this coil on plug probe. Here is the 65 amp amps clamp. This is a low amps clamp. This is a 650 amp high amps clamp that would be used for starters, alternators, things of that nature. And here's our coil on plug probe that you kind of just hover over ignition coil and see if it's firing or if it's weak. We'll show you guys that here in a minute as well. To use this equipment you really need to have the MS908 and the Maxi Scope, which Autel was nice enough to give me not too long ago. It's been very very handy in the shop. On my Amazon affiliates page you guys have been buying a lot of the MS906s and I think a couple of 908s really appreciate that you guys have been buying a lot of the Autel equipment. Now you can purchase this. We'll put it on our Amazon affiliates link as well. We'll also have a link in the description to Autel's website. This is really sweet stuff. We're going to show you guys that you can use a high amps clamp not to test your starter but actually test your engine. Is one of the cylinders low on compression using an electrical amps clamp. Let's go ahead and get this set up guys. Go ahead and turn on my clamp to the one millivolt equals one amp setting. We'll go ahead and zero it, make sure it's nice and zeroed. We'll hook it to the cable or the wire that actually goes down to the starter so it can measure the amperage going to the starter. And I will go crank it and you'll see some things go across the screen here. Okay, I'll stop it real quick and we'll scan back to our readings that we got. As you can see, it looks like a bunch of garbled up wavelengths, but there's so much information here. I have purposely removed the spark plug from cylinder number two. That kind of emulates a low compression cylinder. And as we can see, every time a cylinder goes by and puts a load on the starter, it pulls more amps for a split second. As you can see here, wham, there's a cylinder. Wham, there's another one. And if we know the firing order of the engine, which on these Dodges is the same as a Chevy, 18436572. 
we know that our entire sequence starts here and ends here because it keeps repeating. So here's 1, 8, 4, 3, 6, 5, 7, and there's 2. Number 2 had no spark plug in the hole and when it got to that cylinder there was no compression which meant no load on the starter. So we see it goes to zero almost, nothing. All the other cylinders are healthy. You could really zoom this in and get really precise if you wanted to. But if you were to see one or two or three of these that are doing this, or, what, or some of the peaks are way smaller, then you will know and that cylinder has low compression. I need to find out why. So you don't have to get out a bunch of gauges and pull all the spark plugs. You just hook your amp clamps up, bam, number two is low on compression. Now we can test that cylinder and see what's going on. Is it valves? Is it rings? What's going on with it? And in this case, it's a spark plug removed from it. But look at that, guys. One, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, bam, two is low on compression. So that's what you can do for a compression test. I've used this before and it saves so much time, so much time. I can be like, yeah, on cylinder number two you got low compression. There are some people that do their own work. They just need an answer, a real fast answer. And I can give them a fast answer with this. Now let's move on to the low amps clamp. What can you do with a low amps clamp? We'll turn off channel A. We'll go to channel C, which I have hooked up right here, as you can see on the Maxiscope, channel C. This is our little low amps clamp. We'll turn this guy off. We're done using him. As you can see, it's a smaller little hole here. It's not meant for testing large starter cables. It's meant for smaller, low amperage things. Here's the cable that feeds the fuse box. We're going to pretend we have another battery drain. So we'll pull our fuse box lid off. You guys seen in a previous video on an SLK320, we went pulling the fuses. We used a snap-on vantage to figure out the amperage draw. This could do the same thing without even taking the battery apart. It just uses a clamp around the cable without having to disconnect the battery at all. So I'll go turn on the key and we'll simulate a load. As we can see, we're pulling some serious amperage. It's about 10 amps if we follow what we have our clamp sent to. So at this point, we could start pulling fuses and see where does the amperage draw go away. I'll go pull the fuse for the blower motor. That's what I have on right now, the blower motor. I'll go around here and pull it. And we'll watch what happens. Boom. Almost to zero. Obviously we can hear the blower motor. We know that it's pulling the power. That's where the power draw is. But if you had some other item that you can't hear, you can't see, you go pulling fuses, and then you can see, bam, there it is. Watch when I hook it back up again. There's our draw again. I'll pull it back out. And it goes away. So using that method, like I said, we don't have to disconnect the battery at all. We just hooked right onto the cable coming out of the battery that powers the fuse block we can start testing right away. It's a really sweet tool. Let's do one more test using the coil on plug probe and then you guys will see how sweet this system is. So we've moved over to the F-150. We'll show you guys one last test that you can do. I'm going to switch over to channel B now. That's where I have my coil on plug probe hooked to. So let's go ahead and do that now. We'll turn off channel C and you can turn these all on at the same time if you want to look at multiple sensors all at real time, but I'm just, I don't want you guys to get confused. We're doing one channel at a time. There's channel B. I'll go start the engine, and then I will hover this over one of the ignition coils, and you guys will see a readout, and I'll explain the readout. So as you see, I will just hover it over the top of the ignition coil. That's all you have to do, and then we get a reading. So this is with the probe off the coil. 
just a baseline reading. Now I'm going to hover back over the ignition coil again. There we go. Okay, I will go turn off the truck and we'll explain what we see here. So this is where we just started hovering over the ignition coil and started picking up a signal. Each one of these really tall spikes is actual a firing of the spark plug. So it's fire, 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 fire. It's in perfect sequence and perfect time. That's every time that that particular coil is firing the plug. If we were having a misfire because of a weak or a dying ignition coil, we would see that this particular reading would be gone. It would be a gap in between these two. So it would fire, it wouldn't fire, then it would fire, 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 then it wouldn't fire. But as you can see, it's perfectly steady all the way through. If you really want to zoom in and do some serious digging, you can actually look and see if it's a weak coil or a strong coil, looking at the data in between. But I'm just showing you guys today, this would be a quick way that I could hover over the coil, and I would want to see, just like you see here, constant, perfectly in time spark. If I see a few of these that are missing, it's just flat through here, then I would know that that coil's bad. Something's wrong there. It could be wiring, it could be the plug, but we know that is a particular area we need to focus. So it's not a battle of brands. We're not talking about Ford versus Dodge, and we're not doing that here. What we're talking about is, like I mentioned before, I don't like to order parts or make decisions with a customer until I have the data. And you can't have the data by thinking, well, I hope it's this or I think it's that. Autel supplied me with this equipment so that I can have the answers. I can have, yes, it's this, or no, it's not. That's what I work with, black and white, yes and no. This type of equipment can get those answers not only precise, but very fast. I can wheel this over, hook it to a vehicle, and start getting answers right now. Then I can start getting an estimate together based on my findings. This can be used on a 2021 Ford Mustang. It can also be used on a 1918 Ford Model T. We could test the starter. We could test a lot of different things. This, this can be used on all vehicles, diesel, electric, gas. I don't care. It is very, very powerful tooling. I wanted to thank Autel for giving me this equipment. It will be very handy to have in the shop. If you're curious what other kind of tools we use in the shop, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We'll have the engine oil and transmission gauges there. We'll also have this listed there for sale. If you haven't hit the subscribe button already, I really recommend you do that now. There's some really sweet projects in the works. Thanks for watching.